August 2011. Gold is above $1,800 an ounce. In fact, I was just being given the latest numbers. Did, did I hear you correctly, John? 1822. Let's put that on screen. That is unbelievable. $1,800 and $22. $1,822 total. That, of course, is on news of Joe Biden, the guy that says the Tea Party is the number one threat to America, not the big mega banks that took over our country, set up the policy of globalism, and deindustrialized our nation. No, it's uh, not the globalists who've been running this country's finances since 1913 that are causing all the inflation and the deindustrialization. It's all the fault of Ron Paul and the Tea Party. And uh, you've heard the, the, the vice president and others, and the police are being taught this, that it's the Tea Party. They're getting ready to blow stuff up. They're Al-Qaeda. This whole Al-Qaeda police state grid set up to protect us from Al-Qaeda, supposedly. It's going to have to be used against you. And uh, if you go to the Drudge Report, drudgereport.com, and go over to the right-hand side, uh, you can find our article from yesterday, uh, Big Sis, uh, Homeland Security, if anybody thought that all the other videos they put out were all the terrorists are white, all the good guys are, are, are dark-skinned, uh, reporting on the evil uh, white people that the media has branded as, as, uh, as the Tea Party. You know, the Tea Party is open to everybody. It's a movement for liberty and freedom and getting government under control. But the, but the, but the establishment dinosaur media uh, has uh, come out and said uh, that uh, the Tea Party is white and white only and racist, and yes, they're getting ready to start bombing. And so we're going to have to use the police and the army on them. And you've got all the White House memos and White House advisors we read yesterday saying minus a new Oklahoma City or 9-11, they're not going to be able to get their agenda through of gun control, open borders, massive tax increases, globalization, the end of our sovereignty, the green police, all of it. So it is on big time. And I'm opening the phones up. Ahead of Max Geyser joining us on the economy coming up in about an hour and 20 minutes from now. Dr. Bob Bowman, former head of uh, the Star Wars SDI program. He'll be joining us uh, to break down um, why are they now rolling out a lot of the secret space planes that they've had for a long time. Why are they now telling the public about that? And what can he tell us that uh, is in the declassified realm but not popularly and commonly known? So that will be in the last 30 minutes. Uh, of the transmission today, but uh, Mr. Biden, the vice president, is over in China publicly begging them to prop up the dollar further and to buy the worthless treasury bills that the Federal Reserve is buying 75 plus percent. I've had economists don't even corrected me. They say, Alex, that 75 percent was a year ago. The Federal Reserve is now monetizing over 80 percent. Well, whatever. The point is, is that we're going into a hyperinflationary spiral. Will we go all the way to Weimar Republic status or Zimbabwe in inflation? I certainly hope not. But it is definitely accelerating right now. And the system's been trying to deny that. Uh, but the facts are starting to come out. Uh, global markets tumble amid jitters about debt and the economy, world stock markets tumbled and gold shot to a new record high Thursday on renewed worries about Europe's debt crisis and a weak U.S. economic data. Uh, U.S. home sales are plunging at record rates. Uh, the stock market was down 450 points. It went back up about 50 points and now started its drop again. It's down 421.22 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. NASDAQ's down 118. S&P down 48. Uh, so we'll continue uh, to break all of that down as it unfolds. The global rush by governments, institutions like universities and major companies to grab gold is on. I only wish I would have listened to my wife five years ago. Uh, she said, honey, you're keeping uh, a bunch of money in the company bank account as an emergency backup to run InfoWars and Prison Planet, and we have no reserves, uh, basically, of our own. Uh, and she said they could devalue that. You're the one saying buy gold. And I said, well, I have bought our personal gold and silver, but I'm keeping this in reserves uh, to basically, uh, as we go into this depression, keep this operation going, at least for a while, if things totally collapse. 
Uh, but she's right. I, I wish I would have bought gold when it was $800, $1,000 for the backup nest egg for this operation. Uh, because now I'm spending the cash we have saved regardless to start the TV show and uh, the other news programs we're going to build around it. Uh, but even though I sit here and give people advice all day about get into gold, get into silver, I understand it sounds like a lot at $1,000 an ounce or 1822 and rising. But again, it's not that gold is really that valuable. Uh, we're not in 1995 numbers. It's that gold is simply more now because the dollar is being devalued and the U.S. government, the, the private banks that have hijacked our government, have told the world they're going to devalue. That's why I played that clip two or three times last week uh, where Alan Greenspan on Meet the Prostitutes, to use a Gerald Salente term, um, was up there with the Obama uh, White House uh, economic advisor. And uh, he shook his head whenever... Uh, Greenspan, the former head of the Fed, said, we're not going to default. We're just going to print money. And the host and the guest, the other guest, went and actually did a double take. You could tell they had an adrenaline rush uh, of shock that this was being said openly. So they're now going to hide in plain view the fact that they are absolutely robbing every man, woman, and child in this country. It's one thing to know their policies are going to lead to rack and ruin. It's another thing to now be sliding in to it. And I liken it to the time my father and I were driving out of Fredericksburg, visiting family back into Austin and outside Stonewall, uh, got hit by a tornado. Tornadoes in the summer, late summer, just formed out of nowhere. We didn't know it was a tornado until the state police got there. And we said, our truck just got thrown off the road. And they said, yeah, we know. Did you, did you see the barn blown over right there the, and the power's out in town and cars are dumped over? You were hit by a tornado. Look at the path of it right there. I was like, well, I, I, we didn't see it. Well, why didn't you pull over? Well, we didn't know. We didn't have news radio on. We, we didn't know a tornado formed. <laughs> but but, but as, as the car got blown off the road and spun down a 40, 50-foot ditch, it was like five minutes. It was only a few seconds, but it felt like five minutes. I remember saying brace for impact, and then we shot through the barbed wire fence at the bottom, and luckily as it spun, we hit the back of the Tahoe, uh, or I guess Suburban. It was a stretch Tahoe, almost a Suburban, into the, about three oak trees, and it smashed about a third of the truck in, broke our seats, uh, and my dad got a concussion and started throwing up. I, I was unfazed, uh, thank God, uh, but... Uh, and you're saying, why are you telling the story again? That's what it feels like. 2008, we feel the truck starts spinning. 2009, we're starting to brace ourselves. 2010, the truck starts going down the gully. Start of 2011, it goes through the barbed wire fence. And 2012, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hit the oak trees. And it is not going to feel good. So... I'm just here to tell you right now that this isn't a game and everybody better get their stuff in line. You better get our business together. And that means all of us. I was talking to my wife last night and I said, listen, we have got to get the hatches battened down. We got the water filters. We got the firearms. We've got the food. But I said, I want to get more storable food. And I said, we've got to talk to all of our families, even if some of them laugh at us, and we've got to tell them to get ready. Even if some of them don't listen. Most of my family has listened. Most of my family's more awake than I am. Some of my family really helped wake me up to another level. Um, and that's because they live in the real world. My mother's uh, brother, well, out of high school and college, worked on oil rigs and then I guess he volunteered to go to Vietnam and trained up in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth uh, there uh, to be a helicopter pilot, became a helicopter pilot in Vietnam, lived uh, then after that in Central America, lived in Guatemala, and saw the real world. And I remember in high school saying, I love Rush Limbaugh. Man, he's great. And my uncle looked at me and he said, he's there to control the conservative movement in America. Do you know about the New World Order? And I said, yeah, I've read none dare call a conspiracy. 
And he said, yes, and, 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 and you know, it helped expand my understanding to an even greater level. But I do have some family that you try to warn them, they don't want to hear it. They just want to think everything's fine. I went to a resort um, a couple days ago outside Austin because we were invited to a, a birthday party. One of my wife's good friends, one of my good friends, and their uh, daughters are there, their young daughters. So my children went and played with them. And while I was at the resort outside Austin and uh, wa people watching, I saw what you'd call upper middle class type people, and the men are all the same. They're all sports fanatics. They're all into how they look and having the you know coolest clothes, and their wives are all the same. And uh, they're all, I'm sure, nice people. But I sat there in the restaurants watching them watch Sports Center and heard all the men only talk about sports because that's what they've been given as a male role model is just being grown up little boys. No, no, men are supposed to be informed about the world. They're supposed to be politically and civically involved. Not because we're a bunch of busybodies, but because if you're not politically involved, you're going to be usurped by corrupt interests. And that's now happened. And so we don't have a hope. There is no hope. Go to break. I meant to finish the statement. There is no hope for this country and civilization if men just think that they're going to go to work every day and then go play golf and then come home to their children at 7 o'clock at night and watch TV and get up and take their kids to school and then turn them over to the government programming and indoctrination and then go to the sports bar and then come home at 8 o'clock and maybe read their child a book and then go to sleep. I mean, parents on average aren't even spending time with their children. I, I, I watch people's children uh, in restaurants and almost all of them aren't even talking. Everyone uh, is on their iPhones, their iPads, their Blackberries, their smartphones, including myself sometimes. So I will just leave my phone in the car. And if a national radio show calls me and I miss it, that's the way it is. I've got to sometimes stop working, even though my work is in direct challenge to the globalist and is solution-based. Imagine these other people. And sure, they're fighting for their, quote, great way of life and to make money. But at the end of the day, your money's not going to have any value and you're not going to have any economy to work in if we don't get informed as a nation and as a planet to how things really work and stand up against this corrupt system. Now, I'm going to open the phones up after I cover some of the economic and world news. I'm going to open them up now for police and military, current military, current police, former military. I know there's a million private contractors in this country. Uh, do, do you really buy into the rebranding that's been going on behind the scenes for years, but now is being publicly rolled out because they're getting ready to uh, actually stage the events. Are you buying into the rebranding that the number one terror threat is returning veterans, gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, in the fetters, anti-globalist, anti-UN people? Basically, anybody that's informed and involved and understand uh, understands what's happened to this nation and this world and is trying to, to save the country. I, I mean, do you really buy that? And the good news is we've come so far as a society and as a nation. Here's the cover of the Austin American Statesman yesterday. And it was the cover of many papers across the country. Perry talk of treason draws ire. Comments about Fed chief criticized, but governor stands by his statement. Even if Rick Perry is completely plastic and phony, the fact that he's coming out and saying treacherous, almost treasonous, the fact that he's having to identify the real government, the government that stays in place as presidents and congressmen and women come and go, the fact that we've gotten to that point, that Michelle Bachman's talking about abolishing the Fed, that Rick Perry's talking about it, that they're having to try to become Ron Paul just to be popular, tells you what we already know from our research but what the mainstream media tries to buffalo the public with and keep from you, that an anti-New World Order, pro-America, pro-sovereignty, pro-free market awakening is the majority now. 
of thinking political people, the majority is awake. And the final domino to fall is that the majority does not know it's a majority. 